Welcome back, boys and girls. In this video, I am going to be smoking cigarettes. You're kidding me, right? Oh, I, I, I'm sorry. I thought you said cigarettes. <laughs> Now, before you start with the comments about how you shouldn't smoke and it's bad for your health and it's awful and it costs a lot of money and you call my mother and tell her I'm smoking cigarettes, which never did any good anyways, <laughs> this video is not about me smoking cigarettes. This movie is about me installing the wires onto the filterette of the 1943 Willis MB. So there you go. Not cigarettes, filterette. I didn't quite get the memo on that. Let's dive in while I'm still not embarrassed. This piece of the wiring harness is probably one of the most complex. It's part number A5981. It's the filter wiring harness. And if you notice here, there's quite a few leads that connect to different components here in our wiring system. We'll break it all down because basically this wire wiring harness is going to go through the filterette and out the opposite side because the filterette itself actually acts as a suppressor. So the radio, electrical radio interference will not happen if you had a radio Jeep or if your Jeep was near a vehicle that did. I am gonna wire this filter at exactly the way it was pictured as you saw they're considering the bottom and the top and I'll put those in sequence. The other part we have to install here is the A5073. It's a red wire with three white tracers. And that's going to connect to that junction block there on the what I will call passenger side lug. Now don't pay attention to that wire you just saw connected there. That's for the next video. That goes to the voltage regulator. But for now we're going to attach that red wire with the three white leads and then we're going to slide it through this grommet as that end is going to be attached to our filterette as well. We're we'll getting into the passenger's compartment here shortly and I'll show you that filterette again. But before I do, I want to show you that I had to purchase screws and internal external star washers for the filterette. It did not come with them. And these are size 10, 24 by half inch. Okay, now we've got our underneath our dash here. And we've got our filterette. And we've got the leads that we just installed. And notice you've got a black with two tracers, a black with three tracers, and of course that red with three tracers as well. I'm going to wire those as follows. Just like the diagram, I'm going to put the black with two tracers at the top, the black with three tracers in the middle, and the red with three tracers at the bottom. Let's go back now to that main harness, and I want to take another look at this. Notice the ends here are three separate wires, and then these th wires have actually leads that come off of them. That's going to be really key when you install this. We'll just keep in mind that the ones that have the leads are the ones that are going to connect to our circuit breaker, our amp meter, and our ignition switch. Okay, so now we're going to go inside the Jeep here and we're going to attach these three leads. And how we're going to do this is we're going to do it exactly and coinciding with the way that we installed the ones that we came through the firewall with. So we're going to attach the red with the three tracers, the black with the two tracers, and the black with the three tracers exactly across from the ones that we installed that came through the firewall. I'll show you that again closely here before we put the cover on. And while I'm talking about the cover, when you're wiring this, you're going to want to make sure that you keep those leads secure inside because that cover itself has got to slip over the back side there of the filterette. And if you don't have the wires nice and tight to the sides there, it's going to be difficult to get on. So I'll show you how this was done here. You see the red with the three on the bottom, the black with the three in the middle, and the two tracers on the black at the top and they're exactly across. Notice why I had those wires turned upwards and back so this cover. I'm telling you this is a fun thing to put on. So you notice inside there there's some black cardboard and we've got these two screws that are on the top that you've got to line up with the two slots that are on that filterette. If you have trouble when you slip this cover over don't force it in order to pinch the wires. Make sure you've got them all nice and tucked even if you have to go through and loosen your screws back up and retighten them again. You're going to want that to come out the top. Now I've removed some things that were connected to the actual ammeter itself because I want to show you this really clearly. Remember back when I marked those positive and negative side, your ammeter could be different if it's reproduction. We're going to go now and connect that red lead with the three white tracers to the negative side of the ammeter. And I'm going to leave that loose. I'm not going to tighten it down now because I've got to put the other components back that you've seen me do in a previous video. I just wanted you to be really, really clear on that fact that that red wire goes to that negative side of that ammeter. Now we'll connect the other areas that we have to, including the ignition switch, which is all the way across the dash there, and the circuit breaker. It's important that this is hooked up correctly because if not, your ammeter will register falsely and give you a negative reading when it should not. Okay, so now we've got the black wire with the three tracers and it has that extension or lead that comes off it with the black and two tracers. We're going to connect that to the positive side of the ammeter and then we're going to connect that side to the circuit breaker that we installed in a previous video and that is on the passenger side of the vehicle. 
That is the circuit breaker that we are going to have pass our circuit through that will actually go to the horn eventually. So I'm just going to turn this upside down. You, again, I always repeat this myself, but you want those circular connectors to be flat against the back side of the area you're connecting them to. This is a little tight of an area to get into, but you can do it with a small flat-headed screwdriver, and then you just go ahead and tighten that nut down. The circuit breakers came with these screws and the lock washers with them. So you get an idea there of exactly how that circuit goes. Again, I've got to put some other things back on there. I just wanted to be really clear on where these two leads go on the backside of the ammeter and to that circuit breaker. I'm using a little clip here from a previous video when we installed the ignition switch and I'm just doing so for reference because we're going to go on the back side here of the ignition switch and we're going to hook up the two leads that are connected as one connector to the bottom side of the ignition switch. So the black lead with the two tracers you see I've got connected to that bottom post there of the ignition switch and then we've got that short little lead that comes off the bottom there. That is going to be connected to the circuit breaker that is on the driver's side and I'll show you here through the area where the speedometer will go and we're going to hook that to the bottom side of the circuit breaker using the screw and the lock washer. That circuit breaker is what's going to be in the inline series circuit there with the fuel gauge assembly. That's in a separate video that we did previously. Now I'm going to connect back those two leads that I removed just so I could show you the clarity there. These are the red leads with the three tracers and that's just going to go right back on that negative post of the ammeter there where we connect it. Again, I just did that so you could really see clearly where that lead connected to. The red with three tracers goes back to the B terminal on the major switch there for the lights and then also is connected to the ammeter. On the other side of that circuit breaker, I'm connecting the black with two red tracers. That's A9220 part number. Let's go back and look at the diagram one last time here. You can see that. That's where that goes through the firewall there. We did that during the horn wiring. And here we have all the circuits that you can see very clearly in this diagram in the Ron Fitzpatrick Jeep Parts catalog. And we've completed all these different circuits. And this is a major hurdle in the wiring series. I'll just check out these circuits one last time and then go ahead and make sure all my fasteners are tight and then we can move on to the next video which will be wiring the generator. Thank you for watching. The filterette was used for radio suppression only. It really has no modern function today unless you are running a World War II radio on your Jeep and then you want that. But most folks want that correct so that's why the wiring harness I have is for wiring through a filterette. It's a neat little addition there that you can put underneath your dashboard. I think you'll like it and well, like I say a lot of folks want to have it the way it should have been. You don't have to have one and wiring harnesses also come where there's no filterette. In this application though we're going to go through that filterette and I hope I was clear on how that's wired and how that cover went on. But I think it's a really cool piece that goes underneath there and I'm, I'm glad I've got one underneath the dash there. All right my friends if you'd like to subscribe to what we're doing here on the Team G503 video series please do so I'm inviting you to do so. You can click down there on that subscribe button and then click that little bell right next to it there to get notifications of when we release the new videos. Until next time, my friends, don't smoke and please don't call my mom. Keep it safe and happy jeeping.